I was born in Newport. There are very few people who were born in Newport. My sister was born at what was called the Palm Hospital, which was a brick building on what then was Central Avenue, right about just the side of the Newport Yacht Club. Uh, I put the doctor's name, the doctor's name was Grundy. And there, there are people that, that pride themselves in be calling Grundy babies. I wanted to be here to tell future generations about the ice business, which was in, integral, integral to the success of Newport Beach. Nobody had refrigerators in those days. The population of Newport was maybe a couple thousand people, and the industry was fishing. And what is now Newport Cannery Restaurant was at that time Western Canners Cannery. It ran 12 months of the year canning albacore that was being caught right out here in the Catalina Channel. And all of a sudden he moves in 1919 to Balboa and buys a home. Buys a home. Peninsula. Hmm? Balboa Peninsula. Balboa Peninsula, 513 West Balboa Boulevard. Well, he's in the first wave of homeowners on the peninsula. I mean, people weren't buying homes till 13, 1913, 19. Well, you can see from that photograph I told you that the area was built up around Bay Island where Madame Majeska had a home and on the mainland in that area too. And you can see that the original Newport Grammar School was all by itself on, at 10th Street. Um, there was no Catholic church or any that kind of stuff at the time. He started making ice. And since nobody in Newport had a refrigerator, everybody had an ice box. And he got these trucks. They were Model T. You had to crank them to get them started. And they'd load them up with ice. And what happened was this ice was being molded in these tubs, these iron tubs that molded a block of ice about four feet long and a foot wide and two feet deep. And then they put them on the truck and they had ice picks and you could make smaller units out of these big blocks of ice. And the ice delivery people would go around to every home in Newport, Balboa, Balboa Island, Cronel Mar. They even delivered ice to Laguna Beach. My dad's claim to fame was that he had seen every woman in Newport in their hair curlers and bathrobes because they had their ice boxes on their back porch. Okay. And you can see that they now have five Model T ice trucks out here. And back here are the water tanks where they add minerals or whatever is necessary to purify the water for ice making so you can you can chip this ice and drink it in a drink you know uh, these tanks were made by floor which in my time in in the 60s and 70s floor was building harbors in that saudi arabia but this is a thriving business he's the only one supplying ice to basically all businesses in newport beach and costa mesa and laguna but the business thrived from when they started it was about 1925 maybe. And it was still, they were still selling 25 pounds of ice for a quarter in when my dad sold the place in 1947. So you can imagine the profit he was making back in 1925. And there's no income tax. He built Secondly, while he still owned the ice plant, he built uh, a commercial 
storage plant where you, the public could come in and rent a locker and get, get their goods frozen. Because at that time, refrigerators still didn't freeze. They were just refrigerators. So he provided that frozen food locker and uh, he would butcher uh, half a beef for you. And I remember wrapping the, the cuts and label them with, you know, this, this is a, a rib or a steak or whatever it was. And my brother and I, we would challenge each, each of us. This would be right after the war, so 1945. This was a frozen food locker. How long can you go into the frozen food locker without a coat on? <laughs> and the, the time was about three minutes. Yeah. At one time, he owned more lots in Newport than any other individual before the Irvine Company built Fashion Island. The thing that made the ice business even bigger was the Santa Ana Army Air Base, where that came in in 1942, and it encompassed hundreds and hundreds of acres. During the war, they processed over 30,000 of the cream of the crop. They were going to be pilots or navigators, so they had to be smart. And most of them were from, you know, other states. And um, when they had their day off, they all came to Balboa to drink. And there were restaurants in Balboa. There was a dollhouse. There was... Um, White's Cafe, the Bamboo Room, uh, the Blue Room, Vox. So Balboa was full of these young men. And after the war, a lot of them came back here. And that's how Costa Mesa grew and, and also Newport and Balboa. It was an amazing place to grow up. And it's like the psychologist told me when I started complaining after my wife died, he says, wait a second, <laughs> you've had a magical life. You know, I've done so many things. There was an air Eddie Martin's airport. I remember my dad, we were delivering ice to, to Santa Ana and we stop at the airport where were biplanes taking off before the war. Um, you know, things were exciting. This is not the Irvine Company. Right. This is Don L. Brin's construction company. We right. built homes. And that day, I increased my salary. <laughs> more than 100% plus an annual bonus. So it was a pretty good gig. And I was there from 72 to 81. And during that time, Donald Bryn acquired the Irvine Company. So um, I was part of all that. But what occurs to me also is you have such a vivid memory even going back to like about, about the time when nobody does, when you were born. Why do you think you can recall these things? I don't know because I have a short-term memory problem. And that's what scared me into getting involved with you folks because uh, my long-term memory is really, really good. <laughs>